we move to wide receiver. Marvin Mims is obviously the big loss, but there's a lot of production coming back to that position. Uh, there's some production, not okay. a lot. And they honestly, it looked throughout most of December like Marvin Mims was going to come back for another year, going to come back for his senior season at Oklahoma. He ultimately decides to move on, take his chances in the NFL draft, which you can't fault him for. He was wondrous over his three seasons in the Crimson and Cream, and he's got a bright future at the next level. But the Sooners bring back two starters in Jalil Farouk and their trusty slot guy, sixth-year senior Drake Stoops, Bob's son. Outside of those two, there is not a returning receiver on this roster that caught more than three passes for Oklahoma last year. So there is a ton of uncertainty as to who steps in and fills the void. They did bring in one transfer, Andrell Anthony from Michigan. Uh, they converted DJ Graham from defensive back to wide receiver, which was long overdue. He was recruited to Oklahoma as a receiver, ended up playing defensive back and starting by the end of his freshman year at cornerback. He's got outstanding athletic ability, but his first love was always wide receiver. And so he switches back to the offensive side of the ball. He's going to be a factor. A guy that I am really, really high on is redshirt freshman to be Nick Anderson, former four-star signee out of Katy, Texas, younger brother of another former 1,000-yard rusher for Oklahoma, Rodney Anderson, who popped off for 1,161 yards in 2017 as Oklahoma went all the way to the Rose Bowl behind the Heisman Trophy winner in Baker Mayfield. But Nick Anderson is a guy that, I mean, you talk about the complete package at wide receiver. I don't know if there are many or any guys that have it in that room quite like him. Six foot three, upwards of 200 pounds, strong, thick, fast, excellent route runner, great ball skills. Uh, he sat out most of the 2022 campaign with a nagging injury, and it really cost him a chance, I think, to be a crucial contributor at wide receiver for Oklahoma. He and Jaden Gibson were the two guys that Oklahoma signed in the class of 2022. And Gibson is kind of the guy that gets a lot more of the buzz just because he is so tall, 6'5", pushing 6'6", from the state of Florida. He was a guy that Oklahoma flipped late in the cycle from Florida. But as much as everybody talks about Gibson, it seems like they don't talk nearly as much about Nick Anderson, who may have the highest ceiling of anybody in Oklahoma's receiver room right now. And so uh, there are a wealth of options. LV Bunkley, Shelton, an Arizona State transfer. J.J. Hester, a Missouri transfer. Two guys that have already been at Oklahoma a year and are going to be looking to expand their share of the snaps. But to me, I think the conversation at wideout starts with Farouk, Stoops, Nick Anderson, and then rising sophomore Gavin Freeman, a preferred walk-on who ended up supplanting much more seasoned veterans and guys that were much more ballyhooed recruits than himself last year as a true freshman. Andrew Anthony had an enormous game two seasons ago against Michigan State. He just, bam, flashed against the top 10 team in the country uh, for the Wolverines and then just disappeared and was pretty non-existent last season. So, Parker, my question to you is, if none of these other guys are able to ascend in their first year, are Stoops and Farouk at the level that you would want at a place like Oklahoma to be the one and two options? I Here's the thing, and that Oklahoma, it, it, this is something that happens every single year. You can virtually set your watch to it. OU fans are worried about receiver and worried about the quantity of proven commodities. And I think what has become a constant, one of the constants in this program in years past is that Somebody will emerge. And again, for my money, I think that's going to be Nick Anderson. But you rewind to 2020. Nobody thought Marvin Mims was going to do what he did as a true freshman, but he led Oklahoma in most major receiving categories. OU also has Austin Stogner coming back, a tight end that they signed as a high four-star kid in the class of 2019, spent three years at Oklahoma, transferred prior to the 2022 season to South Carolina to reunite with Spencer Rattler. Well, he spends one year at South Carolina, only catches 20 passes, decides, you know what? I was more home at Oklahoma anyway. Comes right back home to where it all began for him for his final year of eligibility. And so uh, he is, when healthy, an exceedingly valuable commodity at tight end and one of the most physically dominant players at that position in the entire nation. And so 
if he can recapture the form that he showed at Oklahoma when he was really in his prime, which I would say it was early 2020 before he suffered a bout with sepsis that caused him to lose about 40 pounds and sideline him for the second half of that season. If he can recapture the form that he displayed in early 2020, because he was leading OU in most receiving categories that season up until the injury. Uh, that's just another arrow in Dylan Gabriel's quiver and another guy uh, that's going to have it's going to make quite a productive dent offensively for Oklahoma in the passing attack.